a previous video, we talked about simple linear regression and the method of least squares. Now we're going to tie least squares into maximum likelihood, which we learned about in previous videos. All right, so we are still talking about simple linear regression. So we have our predictor x and our response or dependent variable y. And these are both quantitative random variables, um, excuse me, quantitative variables, um, and we can plot them like this. So we said that we are looking for the linear relationship between them. So in other words, we're looking for the equation of the line um, that characterizes this linear relationship. So we could write it like y i equals alpha plus beta x i plus epsilon i, um, where the epsilons are i i d, independent and identically distributed, normal um, variables with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Another way can Another way we can write it is y i hat equals alpha plus beta x i. All right, so if we want to do maximum likelihood, we know that we need to find the distribution of these y i's. So that's the first thing we need to do, figure out what is the distribution of these y i's. All right, so it probably helps first to think about what is the expectation of the y i's. Well, we know that y i equals alpha plus beta times x i plus epsilon i. So we can use linearity of expectation, and we get alpha plus beta xi plus the expectation of epsilon i. So alpha, that's a parameter. In other words, it's a constant. Beta, that's a parameter, so it's a constant. We can think of the data as constant as well. So that's why all of these things can come out of the expectation, and that leaves only epsilon i inside that expectation. We go back up here, we see that the expectation of epsilon is zero. So the expectation of yi is just alpha plus beta times xi. All right, so that's the first thing we need. Next thing we need to figure out is what is the variance of yi? So again, let's just substitute in alpha plus beta times xi plus epsilon i. All right, so again, Alpha is constant, beta times xi, that's a constant. The only thing that's variable is epsilon i. And so we know that if we have constant plus a variable, and we're looking for the variance of that, that just leaves the variance of epsilon i, which we know is sigma squared. Okay, so we've got the expectation of yi, we've got the variance of yi. The last thing to know is what is the overall distribution? So again, we have a constant, constant, constant. This is the only thing that's variable. And we know the distribution of epsilon i is normal, zero sigma squared. So if we have constant plus a normally distributed thing, that means that y i is also normally distributed. OK, so y i is normally distributed with mean alpha plus beta x i. And then its variance is sigma squared. All right. So for each of these yi's, here's its distribution. And these yi's are independent. But they're not identically distributed. So why are they not identically distributed? Because each of these observations has its own xi. And so if we're plugging in a different xi for each one of these yi's, of course, they're going to have a different mean. And so we can see they have a different distribution. All right, so we've got the distributions of the yi's. And so we can write down the PDF. OK, so we just need to write down the PDF of a normal distribution with alpha plus beta xi as its mean and then sigma squared as its variance. Just a second. <laughs> 